and this is live coffee talk. This is always streaming through my Facebook page at Live Coaching by Elevate. And today I have someone really special. Um, well, you can you can imagine Lillian as the everyday girl whom you go out to the door and she is right there as your neighbor. And she has power through words. And this is something that I have learned on my journey ever since I started my own company is that there's a way, we all have this story in, inside of us. We all have this message inside of us that we wanted to share, we wanted to tell people, but yet sometimes, you know, you get really stuck on how do I tell my story? How do I create that message to make it impactful? So I have today with me, Lillian Sue. She is a copywriter, publicist, publicist and social strategist. She's the owner of the In in retrospective writing services where she helped others in the filmmaker and brands in food, beverage, tourism, hospitality, and tech. She is also the co-founder of the Ignite Universe, which is an innovative audience engagement and growth platform. It is designed to help filmmakers to make control, to take control of their marketing and building engaging audience, by creating their own worlds, which is, you know, the message that you want to share. Give the audience investors and distributors a chance to learn about a film's development and product, pro, production journey. Lillian also has contributed to numerous and publication and blog, such as Vancouver Startup Week, Global House, and Journalist Magazine on tech and marketing. You can follow her on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. I will have all these link information available in the episode notes. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me with a warm welcome, <laughs> Lillian Sue. Hi, Lillian. Hey, Michelle. Thanks for the intro. I'm happy to be here. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. I I'm a big storyteller. And when you and I connected, I was thinking, because I, I have my own uh, copywriter and she's been helping me a lot and I'm going to give her a shout out real quick. <laughs> um, so I have my own copywriter and I realized that having a copywriter um, what, working along the side of someone who is, um, you know, about to doing a business or have a business is so important because every business owner have a message to share. Um, people don't realize it. So I'm curious, how did you get into the copywriting business? Uh, actually, it all started back when I was a university student and I was looking for um, in Canada what we call co-op positions. So that's like a paid internship position. And I started thinking to myself, I'm like, you know, um, if I really want to give this whole marketing and communications thing a fair shot, no one's going to hire me if they don't know what I can do. So I need to start building my portfolio. So in the old days, what I started doing was I started, you know, cold calling and cold emailing 40 plus companies on a daily basis, just trying to see if I could get in somewhere to get some experience. And finally, I had this amazing agency take me on and say that, you know, you're into writing. I need someone to do copywriting for, you know, a variety of our clients, you know, and I said, hey, let's try it. And uh, in, in the years since then, it's really been about helping, you know, solopreneurs, small businesses, indie filmmakers, just a, a lot of industries across the board figure out um, how to tell their stories and, and, and not even just how to tell their stories, but how to tell their stories in a way that resonates with their audiences, mm -hmm. right? Um, particularly in, in the copywriting sphere, I do a lot of um, website, email copywriting, and a lot of social media content. And the really big thing that I always stress to my clients uh, in regards to those types of projects is always about features versus benefits. You know, you are using these mediums to sell your clients something. So at the end of the day, they're always going to want to know, how is this going to benefit me? How is this going to help me? How is it going to solve my problems? And how does it resonate with me, right? Because I think uh, as people, you know, we all 
can get caught up in talking about ourselves mm -hmm. and sort of the things that we went through and the things that, um, you know, that impacted us. But when you're doing that as a brand story, it's really about taking what you went through and really having it connect with your audience, right? Like it's not just about, about you, it's about how you can make that connection with someone else. And that's one of the reasons why when people ask me like at, at the heart of things, what it is that I do, I always say that I'm in the storytelling and relationship building business because you use that story, whatever it is to build that relationship with your audience, with your customers, with, with the media in terms of publicity. Mm -hmm. I, I can, as you're describing this whole journey, you know, I can really relate back to when I first started, it was all about telling my own story. And after a while, I had that feeling of, you know, it doesn't feel right. And it doesn't feel resonating with people. I mean, they, they, there's a, many of us have that sympathy, we have that empathy towards people who went through a really tough journey. But how is it? How is it relating to me? And one of my favorite radio station, um, I don't know if you heard of this, uh, this term before, it's called W I I F M. It's called what's in it for me, right? So everyone mm. had <laughs> <laughs> everyone get tuned into that radio WIIFM what's in it for me and everyone turned into that radio as we're describing the story how is that relatable how is it impacting me and what do I what's my role in this situation and I love what you talked about um doing the cold cold call like yeah. just doing the cold selling um <laughs> I did that of course you know I I sent out numerous email hey you know I noticed you uh, you have this company and I think I would be a great fit but of course you it's kind of like dropping a stone into into a gigantic ocean you never heard back from them so it was very discouraging and then i came across i i wrote a book and mm -hmm. and i came across like there's so much power in expressing what is it that we're going through and how can i help people how can i serve people and then i slowly learning how to tell my story without being sounded so egotistic and it, it just doesn't feel good it doesn't feel right have, have you have you experienced those through the clients that you've been working with yeah you know um there's a lot of uh initial barriers and struggles and confusion when you first get to talking to a client about what their brand story is and what they went through and and even just journaling kind of their whole journey as to like who they are, why they became an entrepreneur, why they decided to create the projects that they create in terms of like, um, if it's an author writing a book, if it's an indie filmmaker creating that particular film, that sort of thing. And, and sometimes um, I, I see those struggles that they have mirrored uh, in me as well. Um, because as a marketer for so many years, I was very much focused on helping my clients tell their stories and figuring out how to help them connect with audiences that for myself, I spent a lot of years thinking that my results can speak for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, whatever I went through, whatever happened, it doesn't really matter as long as, you know, I have the results that can speak for themselves and then my clients know the type of work that I can do for them. And it really wasn't until very recently that I started, um, thanks to business coaching, started thinking about, okay, like um, maybe there is something there because there are a lot of people that have gone through what I've gone through. Um, things like uh, breaking cultural tradition as a, a woman of color, as an entrepreneur and, and what that was like in regards to navigating all of those um, situations in relation to family and culture and tradition and all of that stuff. And, and uh, my business coach, I'm going to give her a shout out here, uh, Demi, Demi Collier. She said, uh, you know, everyone has their own story and everybody like it's, it's not just about the results you get that comes later, whether or not they work with you or not comes down to who you you're presenting yourself as. And the best part of that is how you choose to present your story. Mm -hmm. So then I took a step back when she said that and I said, oh, Oh, okay. You know, um, maybe I should try this, you know, maybe I should try the, the, the storytelling thing. And, and there's people that have really reached out to me about like, 
Um, I totally understand what you're getting through, get coming from, because like my my family didn't have entrepreneurs. I I came across a whole lot of opposition and and this and that, and you really get to sort of connect with people on a human level before even going into that business conversation. So it's really kind of changed how how I've done business too after spending years just helping my clients focusing on building their own stories and sharing their stories and making those relationships and helping them bridge the gaps. Now I've really sort of learned how to do that for myself. Mm -hmm. I I can totally relate. And and I think your your coach and I should should meet up. (laughs) (laughs) See, there's so much power behind coaching. (laughs) It it really challenges us to, uh, you know, step out of our comfort zone and have a different way of thinking how we used to think. And I love how you're putting yourself out there, um, you know, just actually start using your own strategy on yourself in your company. So, you know, I kind of wanted to go back to you a little bit because you brought up a great point about the, you know, being a woman and being a person with color and how, how, how did your family take all your publicity marketing and all these, uh, you know, people or clients that you've been working with? How, I, I, yeah. My older brother started out as an entrepreneur himself, not not because he necessarily wanted to, but because his field kind of made it a necessity. And and through him, I learned a lot about some of the pitfalls and and the issues in in regards to even though we're in very different fields, he's a chiropractor, but you know a lot about running a business and and also a lot about the mentality and trying to build a positive mindset in regards to running a business. And I'm forever grateful to him for that. Um, my parents, on the other hand, were you know very traditional. Um, I'm first generation Chinese born Canadian. So they immigrated over from China. They were very much, you know, you get the one job, you stay there for 30 years, you get the pension. Doesn't matter if you like it, doesn't matter if you're growing in it, as long as you have that stability and you have the money, then you can, you know, afford to do what you want to do. So they've never, um, that, that was something that very early on, they've never really understood why I wanted to go this route. And I said, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm built very differently. Um, I don't think there is a job in house that I would be able to grow into and continue to learn and continue to challenge myself for 20 years. I just, I don't, I don't see that happening. And I wanted to branch out on my own because I wanted to be able to help uh, as many great people as, as I can. And a lot of my clients are also, you know, uh, first generation immigrants or, you know, um, from, from other Asian cultures, from other, from, you know, people of color and that sort of thing. And I've met some amazing people who have these great stories Mm -hmm. to share. And these are things that I always felt like I couldn't do if I was in house somewhere because I would be tied to a particular company and everything. And I said, you know, I I really want to make a go of this to see how many people I can help build their marketing strategies to not only, you know, make their businesses sustainable and profitable, but really give them the confidence, teach them and coach them and give them the confidence to learn how to manage that sort of thing themselves. Because as you, as you know, as a business owner, the the life cycle kind of comes and goes. Sometimes you can you need the help and you can afford to have the help, but it's not something that you can continuously bring in. So it's good to have that knowledge uh, on how to make things work on your own. Right. So one of the, one of my mandates is, is if, you know, it's not just about doing the work for clients anymore. I want to be able to teach them and coach them to have that knowledge uh, for themselves, because once they have that knowledge, nothing and nobody can take that away from them. Yeah. Like I'll always be here to help, but it's really powerful to have that knowledge uh, to really have agency over how you want to run your business. Right. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's definitely one of my mandates. It's like, it's not just about working with you to do it for you, but it's also about teaching and coaching you to have some of that knowledge for yourself so that, you know, when our contract ends, 
you're able to take some of what I've taught you and what I've done for you and run with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I'm also a first generation immigrant. So my, my parents came from Taiwan. So, you know, the Chinese very traditional, you're either a doctor or you're a lawyer, right? <laughs> and there's like these expectation of whom our children is going to be, they're going to be a doctor, they're going to be a lawyer, they're going to be someone who is in the professionals right feel mm -hmm. but not someone who may be a coach who may be a you know like a uh, pub publicist or um, you know social strategist never came across in my parents mind that I was going to be a coach but here we are and you know it we're breaking that tradition and that wasn't an easy journey I'm, I can mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of you're nodding <laughs> right now but I'm sure there was a lot of um, you know conflict within the family and that fights <laughs> that goes on and even when once we start getting out there you know it's about a, you don't see a lot of um, publicists or you don't see a lot of people in the film industry um, who are uh, people of color, like for Asian to be in that space of um, actually writing a copywriting, actually helping others to write their story. It's just very um, unique and different. And we don't see that a whole lot. And I love how you brought up the fact that, you know, it's about taking things on your own and knowing how to do them. And I was really fortunate that I have been able to meet people like yourself, copywriter. I've been mm -hmm. able to meet other uh, social media strategists and they've been so openly sharing their ideas or tips so that I can actually go and do a hands-on to know how to do certain things, how to do, create my own landing page, how to do my own copywriting, how to manage my social media. I've got all these tips from all the people I have interacted with. So if we were to share a couple of tips with the audience today, what would be something that you, you can perhaps share with um, someone who's just starting out a business? Uh, well, I think when it comes to your overall marketing strategy, you really have to look at what your goals are uh, for the different areas, right? Uh, because one of, on the social media side of things, I always tell people the last thing you want to do is spread yourself too thin and be on every platform just because it's available. You need to really start with, okay, what are my goals, right? Um, because it's, it's about more than just obviously increasing sales is part of it, but it's about more than just that, right? So when you look at writing your goals down on paper, then it's a matter of which, what do I feel comfortable doing starting out with? Like I always recommend for um, the new solopreneurs or the new entrepreneurs, start slowly and then add, because when you are uh, building a strategy, it is going to take your time. It's going to take your energy. It's going to take uh, you putting work into it in terms of the content, right? So start slow. You know, if you are looking at uh, building sales, maybe, you know, promotional channels should be email and one social media platform for you and looking at how you can take and, and to cut down on the amount of work that you have to do to build up that content. I always recommend repurposing to my clients. So if you have a blog post, taking that blog post and grabbing quotes from it, taking those quote images and putting that on social media, things like that. You can turn your blog posts into videos very easily these days, you know, and, and just making so that you have great pieces of content without having to do double or triple the work I think is really important. And also at the end of the day, if you are looking at um, anything that is more sales driven, like if you are promoting a product, if you are promoting a new service, as opposed to um, something that maybe is not as sales driven, you really have to look at how it benefits the consumer and, and why they should go with you, how to build that trust, why they should take that action that you want them to take. So really, I think it's about making sure you plan everything out, starting slowly and always keeping in mind, uh, putting yourself in the customer's shoes, right? 
what it is like, you know, if you were on the other side of the table and you were looking for the service or the products that you're offering, what would you want to know, right? Um, I think those things are really important in regards to really truly figuring out how you want to navigate your world of business. I know it can be hard because for most people, they didn't get into business to do marketing, right? They got into business because they're passionate about their services, they're passionate about their products, they're passionate about their processes. That's their bread and butter. That's why they get up in, in the morning. But when you are first starting out and you can't afford to bring someone in to help you, to teach you these strategies so you have that knowledge, it's really good to just write down all your goals so you can visualize it, you have it all down on paper. It's good to start slowly instead of overwhelming yourself with a ton of platforms. And it's always good to really pin down, you know, who your ideal customer is and how they think, how they feel, what are they looking for? What are their needs? What are their wants? Um, in order to start your content strategy off the right way, instead of having to go back and completely just rip it apart and start over. Yeah, I, I, I like everything that you just described. I went through that journey. <laughs> and it's funny how, how we're talking about this because just the other day, because we're at the end of the, the whole whole 2020 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I was sitting uh, sitting in front of my desk here the other day. I was coming up with a, my, all my goals for 2020, uh, 2021. And I have these uh, layouts and, and parts where I can talk about the whole entire course. And I'm actually planning to sit down in, you know, around new year to plan out the whole 52, year, 52 weeks of all my social media posts, um, which I did that last year. Um, and it was going, going to YouTube and just learning and watching and listening to how people are doing it. And, and, and another thing that I would add is there's so much benefit by just working with someone whether it's a copywriter, whether it's, you know, someone who knows how to do the marketing, like social strategies. And I end up working with a copywriter. I have a social media manager um, whom I'm working with. I have a virtual assistant who I'm working with. Um, I, I can't do it all. Mm -hmm. It's not possible to have one person and do it all. It's great as a startup to know how Mm -hmm. um, so that you can you can actually share with your team what is it that you want to be done. Mm -hmm. If you have no if you have no experience of what is it that you even want to be done, mm -hmm. having a team doesn't make sense. So right. start up would would be starting up slow, knowing how, and reach out to people, watch video or listen to video like this, and and so that you know how to start, where to start. I'm, I'm also interested in, in I kind of wanted to shift the gear just a little bit in, I was curious, how do you find your inspiration? Because a lot of what you do for the clients, you know, it needs to have inspiration, it needs to have ideas, you need to provide idea. Where do you get your inspirations? Uh, I think like at the heart of everything, I started out as a creative writer. So I did a lot of poetry. I had a couple of short stories published before I graduated high school. Um, I still do a lot of just, you know, story writing recreationally myself. And I, and I read a lot, you know, I read a lot of uh, thrillers and, and horror books and, you know, graphic novels, romances. I read a lot of biographies and I learn from, you know, uh, Michael J. Fox has great biographies. Jim Treliving's Decisions is, is a really great one. His, his case study actually of how Boston Pizza did well during Expo 86 when everybody else tanked, mm -hmm. just based on the fact that they made the decision to keep their restaurants open even when it was raining and everyone's closed. That's a great case study on just risk assessment and how to, um, how you make that decision uh, moving forward with business, right? So I, I read a lot, um, I write a lot, I do a lot of my own research in regards to um, other business coaches, you know, other uh, marketing professionals, what people are talking about, what sort of things some of the larger, you know, Fortune 500 businesses are doing that can be a, applied on a much smaller scale. 
mm -hmm. um, things like that. And I also, you know, because I, I work fairly regularly in certain industries like indie film and television or tech or food and beverage, you kind of get a sense as, as the more projects you do, the sort of trends that come up in those industries. And you can, you know, if I think it's a good idea, I can present it to a client and just be like, you know, I, I noticed this, that someone, you know, it, it's going really well. They've gotten great response on it. Let's, let's try it. Let's see if it'll, it'll work for, for this next campaign, that sort of thing. And I think that that really sort of rounds out um, research because I enjoy it, you know, um, I have a lot of fun just like learning from other people and, and even just doing like fiction reading in regards to like how creative writing resonates with me and how you can apply that to business, um, I think goes a long way. And, um, you know, I think it's just really about getting creative, putting all of those pieces together and getting creative on like, um, how you can build a strategy because it's not just all about business right. and even when you're talking like you're taught like uh, a memoir or a non-fiction book like that can still resonate with people the same way a work of, of fiction does mm -hmm. it's just in, in how you execute it even if the marketing strategy like that general ideas are the same and and going back to what you mentioned about like it's important for some business owners to have that knowledge when you have even just a little bit of that knowledge, it really helps the marketing people that you work with figure out what it is that you want to do, the results you want to see. And it also helps the business owner feel more empowered when giving their input, you know, because in the beginning, I've worked with clients who had absolutely no idea. And then, so those discovery sessions and those journeys end up being that much more difficult because you're, you, you're not a mind reader and you're trying to pull out these ideas from their heads when even they can't necessarily articulate what it is that they want, right? So that makes it a lot tougher. And that's why I believe in not just, you know, doing it for doing the campaigns for them and the marketing strategy, but actually educating them as to why it works and how it works so that they have some of that knowledge on like, oh, okay, next time I want to see this. And it makes everyone's lives a lot more easier when you work together as a team that way yeah yeah I can as you're describing I can imagine you know um, someone who's more maybe a visual person they actually want to see it before they can actually uh, tell you or articulate how is it that they want done I had uh, one of the, one of my friend is actually that way you know every time I describe something to him <laughs> he had a difficulty in comprehends it I have to put it actually on paper or mm. on an image so that he can actually comprehend what does that look like and how that might look like for him um, to make it make it go live or having that graphic. So, um, you know, I kind of wanted to wrap up for our day today, but before I let you go, because right now we're in a, in a pandemic and, and a lot of filmmakers, whether you're an indie filmmaker or you're in this pipeline um, filmmaking or a lot of business owner restaurants, they're being impacted. What, what are some of the things that they can do now, right now, to still continue that marketing and continue their work without feeling that gap and just not do anything? Um, I know it's tough because I, I, when the economy goes down and it's impacted, the sort of general consensus is to tighten up the pocketbook, and I can understand why. Um, but that would be a mistake um, because so much of your target market, your audience, everybody's at home. They need things to do. They need things to buy. They need things to watch. And right now is kind of the prime opportunity for you to get in front of them in part because there's a lot less noise. Like in the case of film, uh, pretty much nobody's going to the theaters, even if they are open right now, right? So you have this prime opportunity to get in front of people's eyeballs um, on a streaming platform and building, spending those time, that time building that relationship with your audience through great content you share. Like there's um, behind the scenes interviews with the director and the cast and the crew that you could share. There's, you know, great um, photos of like what it was like on set that you could share or things like if, if you are um, appealing to 
some of my clients are also like they teach screenwriting and things like that. So if you are appealing to more student bodies or emerging, uh, emerging filmmakers, sharing your knowledge about screenwriting and what it takes to put a film production together in terms of funding and everything, there's still great content that you can share that you can that will help then push out your project as well, right? That you maybe weren't um, doing a lot of previously because before all this happened, most people in that industry, and there's still some of it going on, don't get me wrong, but most of them would just focus on, my film is screening at this festival, uh, you know, tickets are this much, come watch it. And that's, that's all they would promote once the film is done. Now I see a lot more um, conversation amongst people in the industry and and also audience members are chiming in too about how the industry is going to change in terms of the projects that uh that are coming out like you see um here in canada they just they, uh, announced the uh, bipoc initiative for all of our major networks to make a concerted effort to hire more people of color uh behind the camera for productions and things like that, because diversity and representation is so important. So things are really changing a lot. And as the conversation is changing, um, a lot of business owners need to sort of look at how, uh, I've heard, used this word a lot, but pivot um, their businesses and to make it more effective. Like one of our local um, restaurant umbrella companies known as uh, Joseph Richard Group has been amazing at, a, you know, meeting their customers where they're at, because they're doing things like meal kits, they're doing things like cocktail kits, they're promoting um, kits for special occasions, they are promoting gift cards, they're promoting liquor deliveries, deliveries. they're promoting pop-up events now for you to just kind of walk in and walk out to, to experience, you know, what they have to offer. And all of this is in addition to having people come into their restaurants now, even if it's a lot less people. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of diversified strategy that all restaurants should be employing to kind of get more people interested in what they have to offer, right? Because there's going to be members of your customers that aren't comfortable with, with going in to eat. There's other members that want that don't like the takeout part of it. So how do you address all of that? It's about diversifying what you're offering. And they have done uh, amazing with it. I honestly hope that down the road, someone does a case study because this, to me, that's that's the gold standard. Mm -hmm. I, I love everything that you just shared. And I, I, I wanted to kind of echo in terms of the fact that I think I think a lot of us are, are holding back and, and we're not we're not actually uh, putting out in terms of money or or hiring or you know just kind of spending. It's because all that fear of well you know I might lose my business. Well I don't know how much is going to go on. So that uncertainty creates a lot of fear. And when you have fear, it, it stops you from spending. It stops you from working with someone who can actually help you in the long term. So people need to sharpen having this um, mindset of looking beyond just where we are now and start projecting into the future. Think about if you were to work with someone right now, it's actually going to put you in a head start. Mm -hmm. Coming up 2021, you all have you have all these publicity and strategies that you already put in place before everybody else. And, you know, and, and go back to that diversity is that Yes, it, you may not see the money coming in as dollar signs, but how about mm. think of it as, you know, your, whatever that you're putting out is returning back in a different form, whether it's your, your people getting to know you, you're increasing your public awareness, your brand awareness, whatever that is, it may not be measured immediately by the dollar sign, but you mm. actually get the return of investment in a different form, different mm. way. Um, which put you at a very better advantage uh, position leading into the open year. So I think it's a different perspective on how people look at it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Lillian, what do you think, what do you believe the world needs? This is a question I ask every guest um, when they come onto my show because there's a lot of things that's going on around the world and you and I are in this world together. So. What do you think the world need? Uh, kindness is a big one. 
you know, just giving people the time and space that they need to, to figure things out on their own time, because we are all uh, dealing with this in our own ways. Not everyone is primed for growth or new opportunities right now. They're literally just trying to survive and we need to give them the time and space to do that. Um, so I think kindness goes a long way. Um, but, but for the people that are perhaps, you know, feeling scared and, and not sure if, you know, they, they can take that step to move forward and everything, I will be perfectly blunt in saying that this year is the first year that I've actively invested in myself and in my business. And I feel great for it because I, ha I have that unbiased third party perspective that's taken a look at my business as a whole and taught me a lot of things about how I can continue to grow and, and, and thrive, not just survive. So, you know, um, if there's one big thing that I've learned this year, it's that you can always make more money, uh, but you can never get that time back that you wasted. Right. So it's, it's uh, definitely something to think about. Mm -hmm be kind. So be kind to others and be kind to ourselves with respect to the time. And yeah, this, this is a world where a lot of kindness is needed. We need to be kind to each other. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lillian, for coming on to the show. It's a great, I had a great conversation with you. Oh yeah, happy to do it, absolutely. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. This is uh, Wednesday Live Coffee Talk. I'm Michelle, and this show is aired every Wednesday on my Facebook page at Life Coaching by Elevate. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to follow me, give me a like, and I will bring more content to you that will inspire you to cultivate that kindness, love, connection, and courage within yourself. So I will see everyone next week. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye. Take care.